Hello everybody, so thank you for watching my video today and in today's video we're going to be looking at how to prepare for the PSA exam. So just a little bit about the Medicine Guide. So the Medicine Guide is a YouTube channel which is dedicated to supporting medical students throughout their entire journey at medical school. Um, so if you enjoy my video today then please like my video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and share with your friends. So in today's video, we'll be focusing upon the eight sections that make up the PSA exam. And then at the end, I'll signpost you towards some of the resources that I used when I was preparing for the exam. So let's get started. So as part of the PSA exam, you will have questions ranging from medicine to surgery to geriatrics to paediatrics, psychiatry, obstetrics and gynaecology, as well as some general um, management scenarios that you might have seen during your GP placements. So there will be eight key sections which you have to complete. So beginning initially with prescribing to prescription review, planning management, providing information, calculation skills, adverse drug reactions, drug monitoring and data interpretation. So there are 60 questions which you will have to complete within two hours and there are 200 marks available. So of those 200 marks, roughly 40% of those marks will be from the prescribing and the prescription review section. So arguably one might say that section one and section two are the two most important sections of this entire exam. Now, most students will sit the PSA exam during their final year at medical school, and there is an opportunity to resit the exam in your F1 year if things don't go so well. But hopefully, after watching this video, you will be prepped with all the tools that you'll need, and fingers crossed, you'll do amazing in the exam. So, during the PSA exam, you will have access to both. The BNF and Medicines Complete, depending on whether or not your university grants access to that website. So one thing to bear in mind is that in the PSA exam, you will have questions regarding paediatrics and how to manage paediatric patients. So just remember that if you're using the BNF, you have to switch into BNF for children for paediatric questions. So the first section in the PSA exam is the prescribing section. So there's a total of 80 marks available and there are eight prescribing scenarios and each scenario is worth 10 marks. So a maximum of five marks is awarded if you choose the correct drug and another five marks is awarded if you have prescribed the medication using the correct dose, frequency and route. Now, some scenarios which you'll be asked to prescribe for are shown in this table. Now, another thing to bear in mind is that the PSA exam gives you access to the BNF and also Medicines Complete. So just remember that you can really use the BNF to your advantage. So let's say you have a scenario where you've been asked to prescribe medication for a patient who has a urinary tract infection, but you're not entirely confident what would be the first line management. So don't worry because you have access to the BNF. So what I'd suggest you do is that you look at the treatment summaries tab under the BNF and you can scroll down to the bottom and look at the management for urinary tract infections. But because you're on an exam, you're probably quite stressed and you will be pressurised for time. What I suggest you do is you use the control F function on your keypad and search for urinary tract infections, which will be highlighted on the website. And it makes it far more easier to search and look things up. And then click on urinary tract infections scroll to the bottom and it will give you a list of the management options available and hopefully you can use this uh, to help pick the first line management that you would use for your prescribing scenario um, if needed and it also gives you information about the second line treatment plan if that's what the question is asking but essentially what um, 
I'm hoping that you'll glean from this is that you can really use the treatment summary section to help you for the prescribing scenarios in the PSA. If there are some questions that you're unsure of how to answer, uh, don't fret because you do have access to treatment summaries and you can use it during the PSA exam itself. So don't feel shy of using this function. So the next section of the PSA exam is the prescription review section where there are a total of 32 marks available. There will be eight prescribing scenarios and each scenario is worth four marks. Now, in each scenario, there will be two questions. So there'll be a part A and part B for each of the eight questions. And for this section, you'll be given a list of medications, including their doses and the frequency at which they're given, as well as their route. And do you have to uh, look at the list of medications and review it with respect to the particular scenario. So it might be that you have to identify the medications which uh, could potentially lead to impaired renal function in a patient who's presenting with an AKI. It could be that you're asked to review medication which is exacerbating hypoglycemia in a diabetic patient. It could be that you're given a scenario where you have to identify medications which could potentially lead to electrolyte derangements like hyponatremia or hyperkalemia, for example. Another potential scenario is that you might be asked to review the medications um, and identify medications which have been prescribed at the incorrect dose or at, or at the incorrect frequency. And I appreciate there are millions and millions of medications and uh, you, you can't possibly be expected to know the correct doses and the correct frequency of all the different medications. But rest assured, this is a PSA exam. You have access to the BNF and you can use the BNF to help you with this question. So what you do is let's say we have um, a scenario where we have to uh, check whether the paracetamol has been prescribed at the correct dose. Um, we would use the BNF to type in paracetamol and then we would click on the indications and dose section and we would check um, with the list of medications that they've given us in the question and compare that to the BNF and see whether or not the paracetamol has been prescribed at the correct frequency and at the correct dose. Okay. So the third section of the PSA exam is focusing on planning management, where there will be a total of 16 marks available. There will be eight questions and each question is worth two marks. So you'll be presented with a scenario and it will be similar to an SBA. So you'll have a list of five possible different management choices and you have to choose which of those is the correct answer and is the most appropriate for the particular scenario. So for this section, if you're a little unsure of how to approach the scenario, then be rest assured you have access to the BNF and you can use treatment summaries again to look up the management plan for a particular condition. So that would be my advice on how to tackle this section if you come across um, a, a question that you're unsure of how to approach. The next scenario is providing information to patients. So a total number of marks available for this section is 12 and you'll have six questions so each scenario is worth two marks. You might be um, in a scenario where the patient is beginning a new medication or is seeking advice about an existing medication. So you'll have a list of five statements and you have to select the most important piece of information that you would provide to a patient for that particular medication that they're using or about to use. So let's say that you have a scenario where a patient is beginning insulin and you need to inform them about some of the risks of taking this medication. Now I'm sure many of you are aware one of the key risks that you need to counsel patients about if they're taking insulin is that you have to inform them about the risks of developing hyperglycemia and making sure that patients are 
informed about what some of those signs of hyperglycemia may present as just so that they're cautiously aware of this and are looking out for this. Now, if you weren't sure of how to tackle a question like that, don't worry because you have access to the BNF. So you would type insulin in the BNF and look at the patient and care advice section. And in here, it would offer you all the information um, that you would need as the F1 um, to ensure the patients are aware of some of the risks of taking um, their medication. So for insulin, um, one of the key things that we need to educate patients about is looking out for the signs of hyperglycemia. OK, so if you're ever unsure of um, where to find information for this section of PSA, uh, just remember you can type up the particular name of the medication and look under the patient and care advice section. OK, so the fifth section of the PSA exam is focusing on calculation skills. So there is a maximum number of 16 marks available for this section. There are eight calculation scenarios and each scenario is worth two marks. So you might have questions such as calculation the dose or the rate of administration of a particular medication. You might be asked to identify the number of tablets needed to make up a certain dose or you might be asked to adjust a dose depending on the patient's weight or their body surface area or you might be asked a question about diluting a drug um, to administer in an infusion pump. So the best way of tackling the questions uh, for this particular section is just by practicing um, using some of the resources that I'll signpost to you towards the end of the video um, because um, some of the questions um, that they have in the, the practice papers and the mocks um, are really useful for this section. Um, the sixth section of the PSA is looking at adverse drug reactions. So you've got a total number of 16 marks available for this particular section. There are eight questions and each question is worth two marks. So let's say, for example, you were asked a question about um, the interactions of warfarin. Um, Again, warfarin is a medication that has lots and lots of different interactions and you can't be expected to know all of them. But don't worry, because you have access to the BNF. And what you would do is that you would look up warfarin on the BNF and you would look at the interaction section and scroll all the way to the bottom like I've done here. And then you need to click on warfarin under individual interactants. And then on the far left hand side, there'll be a huge list of all the different medications that warfarin interacts with. And all you need to do is click on that particular medicine, let's say alcohol in this situation, and then it will give you information about the severity of the interaction and um, whether or not it's particularly dangerous and um, what the effects would be if the medications were to interact. Now, the PSA is going to be a very time pressurized situation. You can use control F to help search for that second drug that could potentially be interacting with warfarin just to make um, the, the search function a little bit quicker and just to help you get through the exam a little bit sooner. Now, the seventh section of the PSA exam is focusing on drug monitoring. So again, you've got a total of 16 marks available for this section. There are eight questions and each question is worth two marks. So let's say, for example, you are asked a question about how would you monitor a patient who's taking warfarin? So you have access to the BNF. So you would type up warfarin in the BNF and look at monitoring requirements and then scroll to the bottom and it provides the information about um, some of the monitoring parameters that are used in patients taking warfarin, which is their INR. So the final section of the PSA is focusing on data interpretation. So there are six questions available. Each question is worth two marks. So there is a total of 12 marks available for this particular section. 
So some of the common questions I've seen for data interpretation is that you might be asked to uh, interpret um, the TSH level in a patient taking levothyroxine, and then you might be asked uh, whether or not you feel that the levothyroxine dose is appropriate uh, based on the TSH level that's been given, or if the levothyroxine dose needs to be increased or decreased. Another common scenario that often crops up is that a patient's had a paracetamol overdose, and you have to look at the um, plasma paracetamol level uh, using the BNF and seeing if the serum paracetamol is above the treatment line and making a decision about whether or not it would be appropriate to manage the paracetamol overdose with n cysteine. So um, the data interpretation section is mainly looking at data and making an informed decision about whether or not um, the doses of the drugs need to be changed or if the medication itself needs to be stopped or if new medication needs to be started like n cysteine for paracetamol overdose. Now some of the resources that I used to help me prepare for the PSA exam was past the PSA book which I think is pretty much the bible for the PSA exam um, and some of the questions for the calculation section um, in past the PSA book is really really good um, and it really does prepare you for the calculation section of the actual PSA exam. Uh, secondly, I used the Get Ahead, the Prescribing Safety Assessment book, and I thought that was really good. Um, I thought that um, it had quite a few paediatric um, cases um, in this book, and I thought that was really good to help me prepare for some of the paediatric questions that did come up in my PSA exam, so I would highly recommend this book too. Also on the PSA website itself, um, you have access to the assessment blueprint, and that will have um, the tables that I had in my previous slides, and that will show you some of the potential um, scenarios um, that could crop up um, for each of the different sections. Also, once you have a login for the PSA website itself. They do have some mock exam papers available for you to work through um, and they are very similar to the actual questions that you could get in the exam. So I would highly recommend that you work through the mock exam papers at least twice before your exam. So thank you very much for watching my video today. Hopefully you found it useful. Um, and I wish you all the best for your PSA exam. So thank you very much for watching my video today.